Moving on to the T-State counter, this is a 3-bit counter that provides up to 8 T-States. Uh, each T-State is one step in an instruction cycle. Um, as you can see, I implemented a T-State reset and that allows for variable instruction length and we'll see that uh, happening um, in just a minute. The way the fetch works, T0 and T1 uh, are always the same for every instruction. Uh, in T0, we output the program counter and latch that into the address register. In T1, we output the contents of memory that are pointed to by this address, which we just got from the program counter, and uh, copy that into the instruction register and at the same time we increment the program counter so it's ready for the net fetch or uh, memory read perhaps. Uh, from there the instruction register, the 8 bits that we got from that, and the 3 bits from the t-state counter are combined to uh, address this instruction decoder ROM and the instruction decoder ROM is what generates all these control signals and basically this is how we get our uh, different opcodes for adding or subtracting or uh, reading from memory or executing a jump and all the different instructions that our computer can do. This is the PowerShell script I use to generate the instruction decoder ROM each of the control signals are defined in this first variable and then as a way to simplify things uh, certain things that are common are combined together uh, here and I call these the opcodes that the processor knows how to do. Uh, for example looking at this fetch IR, uh, fetch always uh, is uh, from memory and includes uh, the program counter so we've got the RAM out and the program counter increment and uh, in this case we're fetching to the instruction register so then we also set the instruction register in. Uh, basically there's always one out and one in and uh, sometimes some other control signals in this case the, the increment. Um, once I've got these shorthands uh, bit values defined, uh, then we get into actually defining the actual uh, opcodes that the computer knows how to do. Uh, so, for example, to load the accumulator, uh, we start with uh, T0, which is always the program counter to the address register, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, T1 is a fetch to the instruction register uh, which is copying the RAM contents from this to the instruction register and incrementing the program counter. Uh, then we're getting ready to do another memory read so we're going to set the, the program counter to the RAM address register and then we're going to read from that memory location incrementing the program counter again using the program counter kind of uh, as a way to fetch this data and then we're going to send that uh, whatever that number is uh, to the uh, A register um, and then we're going to reset because we don't need to do anything else and the rest of the instructions are uh, built up that way uh, putting the different control signals out on the right T state to accomplish the uh, desired results in each of these instructions. Um, as you can see uh, we're down uh, here to um, 3F uh, and so that's uh, uh, one quarter of the 256 instructions uh, that we can define. Uh, not all of these um, are defined. Um, some of them I just uh, haven't figured out a use for yet. Uh, but uh, this is how the uh, control signals are generated in the instruction counter. So all of the control signals that the instruction decoder ROM generates um, are represented up here with these different colored 
LEDs and the colors kind of help give us a clue of what's going on. Um, we've also got the clock and the run LEDs up here to help us know what's going on. All of this content is available on my GitHub repository. If you've enjoyed this, please hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of future videos in this series. And as always, thanks for watching.